welcome. Oh, oh my goodness. You know what? Um, it's definitely a pleasure and honor. Uh, uh, of course, we had, uh, uh, um, which you will be asking, the audience will be asking questions because uh, we have uh, Walter at the audience couch. And at this moment, we have, uh, he's from Tate uh, uh, Publishing. We also have now um, Michael Budnick from, uh, Michael A. Budnick from ASA Publishing Company. Um, and he has two books himself. Like I said, it's interesting that you get two authors on this one time that their books uh, uh, intertwine with, with their own books over and over, you know, so that's, that's very unique. Uh, uh, um, Michael's book is called, the first one was called Like Shards of Glass. Now this is poetry, and it's like, like I said, heavy metal poetry. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, lyrics, okay, he's a musician. And his other book is, that they just came out, is also Reaching Through the Mirror. But that's not all, okay? Uh, um, Michael Budnick's book, not only just this book, but he has, uh, I think, 13 or 14 now? 17. 17. 17 books. So, you know, the publisher has got to keep up with him. <laughs> 17 books. So uh, we're going to start with these first two books. Like I said, 17 books. Uh, um, he's got going. He's just just phenomenal. So uh, you know what, Michael? Tell us tell us a bit about like shards of glass, please. Well, um, it's it starts off a series um, in a mm -hmm. perspective of uh, what it's like to have a mental illness and be a survivor of childhood sexual abuse and recover those memories in adulthood. Um, the circumstances were similar to the events that I went through as a child uh, when I recovered those memories. I can't get into that because those details are classified, and that's about all I can say about that. Um, the first poem in the, in the book. Wait, 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 I do want to say something. Um, that, that, that takes a lot of courage, okay? It takes a lot of courage. Uh, um, I also deal in, in legal matters in. Uh, uh, on family law where where children don't really speak up uh, um, and and here at, at this uh, uh, present point in time to have have an adult to speak up it, it really it goes from the inside not just the heart it's sort of like right down inside so to get it out you know to let somebody know it does take bravery it takes courage um, I'm honored uh, um, I really thank you for doing that you know what I'm saying that, that's helping somebody, you know, and, and you get, like it's always say, you give credit what credit is due. And I definitely appreciate you even coming out to say that because that, that's no laughing matter. That is just something uh, uh, where that an individual actually stood up, not only just in the book, but stood up to let you know, hey, this is something that happened. This is something, you know, it's, I'm just glad. I, I'm glad you're, you're about the second person or second, third person that I know that came on the air that went through a, a problem and a situation. And not only are, is he was able to speak it out, but he wrote about it in music. That's how powerful this is. He wrote it in his lyrics. So you can say it's, it's not a, it, so much of a fantasy, but it is a real reality in it. Okay, and I, I've known uh, Michael for, my gosh, whew, I think almost six years since I first started as well. During the time with Leon Higgins when it first started. I think Michael was like the second person uh, 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 that came into ASA. So, yeah, almost almost five years, something like that, five six years. Yeah, especially when when, when he had uh, uh, um, your nephew yeah, uh, with yeah. Daniel who was go, go, he's getting a band at the time. Now he is in a band mm -hmm. uh, uh, with your, uh, your other nephew. He just he has a baby. Yeah. Yes, yes. Congratulations, yeah. congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> And that really makes me feel old because years have passed now. And I'm just like, oh my God, I cannot believe this. So you know what, let's get back to, to the light shards of glass because even the book itself, the covers, it, it goes in and out of each one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, go ahead, go ahead. Just tell us about the light shards of glass. Well, it starts off with uh, a piece called Throwaways. Now, there's a couple secrets about the poem. Um, the first four, it, it's actually two poems written as one poem. You can read the first four syllables of each line as one separate poem, and you can read the second 
four syllables as a separate poem in itself. And what it represents is the human mind, uh, human brain. You have the logical part and you have your emotional part. And when they're healthy, they work together and everything's cool. When they're not healthy, well, one kind of gets disconnected and shatters. And that's what basically the meaning of like shards of glass is, is the shattering of one's uh, personality and how you have to do that to survive some stuff that are unsurvivable to some people. And from that piece, uh, the throwaways, what that means is, you know, like you see somebody on the street that's homeless. Do you realize one out of four of those people are honorably discharged veterans, men? One out of three women that are homeless are honorably discharged veterans. They're on mm. the street, they have mental illness. What are we doing with them? Well, we're letting them go there. Um, I could have found myself there very easily, but I had a family to go home to after the military basically said, okay, we can't use you anymore. See you later. Um, you know, it's taken me 20 years basically to get to where I am now. Um, it took 15 to fight the VA just to get my service connection uh, that included a uh, uh, an attorney malpractice suit against the attorney that was supposed to do that for me uh, and go against the Navy and there was a lot of stuff that went wrong with that. She let the uh, the time lapse. He had six years to file mm -hmm. and she blew it. You know, and her thing was, well, sorry, you know. She went away and uh, I was left holding the bag and, you know, what are you supposed to do? You know, um, the Navy basically threw me away after the 10 years of honorable, honorable service. Um, you know, I mean, they're not in the business of fixing people. Their, their job is, you know, defending the country. I can kind of see that, but I did the best I could with the circumstances that I had. And, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to scam anybody. I wasn't trying to fake anything. I wanted to do my job. I wanted to keep doing it, but just stuff broke. You know, you don't just put it back together overnight. It's taken 20 years and it's still not together. There's still pieces that will never be back. Uh, I have to keep reteaching myself how to play guitar. I used to be a performing musician. Um, not great. I'm no Eddie Van Halen or Tony Iommi, although I look up to them, but I can raise heck with the best of noisemakers. <laughs> but uh, I've had to relearn that over and over again. Okay. Um, but wow. This I'll tell you what. Uh -oh. uh, that was powerful. Um, you know what? <laughs> I got me lost today. I'm just, you know, I'm, oh my goodness. I'm in awe. Um, when, we, when we get back, we'll get into reaching through the mirror as well. Uh, this is his other uh, second book, okay, out of 17 books. Uh, um, and um, you, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting how everything ties in, you know, and the book is the author and the author is the book. Isn't that interesting? The book is the author, and the author is the book, you know, uh, um, and, and, and I like, you know, knowing an author and being able to share part of the author's life by reading their work. And, and um, yeah, I'll tell you what, let's go, let's go into the uh, uh, book trailers and we'll be right back after this. How's that, people? Let's do that.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, we have, uh, again, Michael A. Budnick, author, poet, and musician. And uh, uh, um, tell us a little bit about Reaching Through the Mirror. Well, that's, that's a continuation of the poetry from the first book. Basically, it's the perspective of that character, you know, um, the mental illness issues, the observations of watching, you know, the political process uh, unfold, you know, the, the elections uh, from the last elections, uh, watching the business meltdowns from, you know, the financial things, uh, the war situation, you know, uh, you know, it's like watching the world crumble around you and have that opinion or the, the thought that, well, okay, you throw me away because I'm nuts and here you guys are, you know, destroying our economy, destroying, you know, the housing market, sending the jobs overseas, but I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's wrong with this picture? I'm crazy, but what is, what is up with this and how come nobody's being thrown in jail for any of this? You know, and that's the kind of questions and the attitude that that, that has. And that was written for my nephew's band. Uh, the second book and the third book was for them. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's, uh, uh, like I said, ne his nephew's name is uh, Daniel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, and he has a, has a band now. He's on tour. Isn't that correct? Uh, he's prepared. Well, they've been doing shows locally. They are going to be going to Chicago here June 12th. June 12th? Yes, a place called Elbow Room. The band's called Dirty Whiskey, and they're really good. Okay, okay so the, the band's called Dirty Whiskey. I'm going to throw that out there. So a little shout out, a little credibility for them. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, um, we are taking it to the audience. Okay, the, uh, they are at the audience couch. Uh, we have uh, Michael A. Budnick and Walter E. Mark. Excellent. Yes, 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 yes. So, without further ado, let's go to the audience. 